So tonight's video, um, it's not gonna be very long and uh, a quick disclaimer, force feedback settings are very much a personal thing. So these are what I feel to be the best force feedback settings. Um, you may not get on with them, you may prefer something slightly different. Now, and a, a quick apology because lots of people have been asking me to do one for ACC, for Project Cars 2, for Forza Horizon 4, Always, I, I will get round to them. Um, it's just I have a lot on my plate at the minute. So yeah, sorry for the, the delay in getting these all out. But today we're gonna look at ACC. It will be quick as I mentioned, because to be honest, the basic in-game settings and adjustments are not terribly comprehensive. There isn't really much to adjust. Uh, and this is what we're looking at. We're not looking at um, wheel check or light generator. This is just your basic in-game stuff um, that most people will just wanna, wanna play with and, and get right. Now obviously this is for the Logitech G9. 20 so let me just get some screen capture started here the first thing you want to do is load up ghub and just make sure that everything in that is at the default setting so this is ghub you bring it up um, assignments are irrelevant click on the steering wheel 50 900 center in spring in force feedback games center in spring strength 10 just make sure they're default Click on the pedals, 50-50-50, and the combined pedals are unticked. As long as they're, they're all like that, you're good to go. So come out of that, load up ACC, which I've already got here, obviously, um, and go into your options, into controls. So there's already a Logitech G920 uh, profile in the bottom left-hand corner here. So you can just go ahead and load that up. I won't do it because I've already done it, uh, and it might, I don't know whether it'll reset my changes or not but we don't want that to happen so you go ahead and load that up there's no calibration options that i can see here um so uh yeah we, we would normally calibrate but i don't think we can for whatever reason but so let's just go down the list here very quickly the steering every all the controls are mapped correctly um, you can change the control bindings on the right if you want to change those ignition start and motor pit limit you're welcome to set them to whatever you want this is about the force feedback so you do whatever you want with those um, so we leave everything on the left hand side the same apart from the brake and the clutch now if you come over here there's a little arrow on the right here where my mouse is we drop down there it needs to be inverted it should already be if the profile loaded correctly. If it's not, make sure you tick that. And then you've got minimum limit, maximum limit. These are like saturation um, settings in other sims. And to be honest, it's a bit weird the way it works here because you can see my maximum limit is set to 40%. You would think that means 40% pedal travel would then be 100% braking force, which is what it would be in other sims if you set your maximum saturation to 40%. It's not how it works in this. You can see um, you've got your red section here and then the gray section and then the darker gray section. So the lighter gray section is how far you need to move the pedal to hit 100% saturation. So where my mouse pointer is there, that is where you need the red one to go, my, my pedals, are they plugged in? Is, no, they're not plugged in, which is why it's all at sort of 50% on the red. Uh, yeah, so where that bar is there, the light gray section, that is as far as the pedal needs to go to hit 100% braking force, even though it says 40%, which is really weird. If we adjust this, I'll just show you, percentage is going up, the gray area is actually going down. And if you go down on the percentage, then the light gray area is actually going up. I don't know why they've chosen to do it this way. Um, it's a little bit confusing. But anyway, for a Logitech G920, there's a heavy brake pedal on these, um, as you probably all know if you've got one. Depending on what setup you use, whether you're desk mounted, whether you're using a wheel stand, a fold away cockpit, or a full static racing rig, this setting here, you'll need to adjust accordingly. Um, if you're on a desk mount where your chair can tilt back if you brake hard, or on a wheel stand setup, same thing, if you press the brake pedal really hard, your chair can tip back. You want to bring it down, in my opinion, of course, to where I've got it here, about 40%. That way you don't have to press the pedal quite so hard to achieve 100% braking force. You won't be tipping your chair back. If you're on a 
uh, a full static cockpit, you can probably leave it 100% and you'll be just fine. Or whatever the percentage actually sits at. Does it sit at 100% default? Let's have a little look. No. So, <laughs> 0% is actually what you would call 100%. Really, really weird the way they've done this. That would mean you have to press the pedal all the way to the floor. So if you're on a static rig, you can leave it at 0%. If you're on a desk mount or a wheel stand um, or a fold away cockpit that has a bit of lift in the middle, like a play seat challenge, put it about 40. That's where I find it best. Uh, and then the other one you want to adjust uh, is the same thing on the clutch here. Again, the values look stupid. I've added in a 5% dead zone because I like to rest my foot on the clutch just a little bit. Um, and then the maximum limit, they call it on this one. What was the one above called? That was also called maximum limit. Yeah, maximum limit is at 90, which if you look at the light gray area, takes it to what normal people would call 60% travel. Because in a real car, you don't have to depress the clutch all the way to the floor before you start moving the gear stick. Once it's beyond 40 to 50%, maybe 60% travel, um, the clutch will be disengaged enough whereby you can start moving your gear stick. So that's how I like to set it up in game also. So they're the only two you adjust there. 90% puts the gray bar, the light gray bar where you see it there, which is in reality about 60% travel. Very confusing, but it is what it is. They decided to do it that way. So shift up and down and just button assignments for your paddles that's uh, that's irrelevant so let's uh, let's go over to the force feedback section over here on the right force feedback gain is just as it sounds it's the gain for your force feedback the overall strength um, of the force feedback if you leave it on a hundred percent then I find that's just a little bit too much and you've also got nowhere to go now let me explain what that means if you're at 100% force feedback, just going down a straight, and you you know you try you steer a little bit, and the wheel's already using all the strength it has available, when you then enter a sharp corner and the force feedback should ramp up in strength, you may well find the wheel clips, which means it runs out of strength. Basically, it can't go any higher because it's already at 100%. So 75% leaves a little bit of overhead, should shouldn't have any clipping issues, and I find that's just a nice weight as well for the G920. So that's why I've got it there. You can adjust that to your personal preference, of course, but that's what it does. Minimum force, the next one down. Best way to explain this. Um, some people think it's to do with eliminating dead zones in cheaper wheels. It's not really. It's the minimum. So the subtlest effects when you're driving through the force feedback, the very weakest ones, if you have this down to 0%, you wouldn't feel them. And the reason for that is because a certain amount of force is required to move the steering wheel against the natural resistance it has. You know, the steering wheel has a weight to it, a physical weight, not an in-game weight, a physical weight. The motor has a degree of resistance to turn, the bushings, the physical components, they all require a certain amount of force to actually move. Um, from the force feedback motor. So if you set that to zero and your minimum forces scale right down to basically nothing, you'll miss the finer details that you should be able to feel. If you turn this up too high, um, you, you whack it up to 15%, which is as high as it goes, then you'll see your wheel oscillating. So the easiest way to tune this is to put it up high and keep bringing it back down until you stop oscillating. Now for me, that was about 5%. I've dropped it down one more to 4% just to give us a little bit of leeway there. So this way, we, we feel the most subtle force feedback effects um, rather than losing them. But it isn't up so much that we're getting oscillation. So that's what that's for. Next one in the list, dynamic damping. Basically, the faster you go, the more your wheels want to self-center. They want to stay pointing forwards. It's a gyroscopic effect of the wheels rotating and inertia. This muffles or dampens the other force feedback effects that you'll be getting through the wheel. So undulations in the road and, and whatnot. Now on more powerful wheels, it's not too much of an issue to leave that at 100%. 
on something like the G920, which doesn't have a lot of torque, doesn't have a lot of force or strength, it can muddy out the finer details at high speeds. So I find about 50% seems to be a nice spot where you still get that added resistance where it wants to self-center, but you're not muddying out the finer details from the force feedback. So that's what that one's for. Road effects. This is a weird one. We all know what it should do, which is amplify up or down the, the, the effects you feel through the road and curbs and whatnot. For me, it doesn't seem to make any difference. I can have it at 100, I can have it at 50, I can have it at zero, and running over a curb feels exactly the same. I don't know whether there's a problem with my PC or my G920. I mean, I haven't experienced it you know, in, in other sims, but for me, it doesn't seem to make any difference. In fact, I'd be really keen to know fellow G920 owners in the comments, whether you notice a difference turning that up or down, because I don't. So that's what it's supposed to do, but for me it doesn't do anything. Uh, and the next one on the list, frequency, is like a polling rate. It's how regularly the force feedback effects are updated um, from the game to the steering wheel. Just leave that at default, works just fine. Um, and we've got the advanced section underneath. Your steering lock is as what it sounds. You can adjust the soft lock of the steering wheel. So 900 degrees is what the wheel physically does. You can turn it up or down. Should you, you can't turn it up. <laughs> you can't add more lock. The wheel doesn't turn any further. You can turn it down if you wanted to. Um, maybe you want, you know, like if you're in an F1 car, for example, you, you turn it down to maybe 360. But that's what that does is pretty obvious. Linearity. Uh, is again pretty should be pretty obvious it means the wheels turn on a one-to-one -one basis you know based on your steering input rather than there being some sort of accelerated curve whereby you turn a little bit the wheels turn a lot and, and vice versa uh, braking gamma is a similar thing i believe i just i've just left it at one it works just fine i haven't actually looked to see exactly what that does but i think it just adjusts the braking curve in a similar way to the steering linearity adjusts that curve uh, and gear shift, debouncing, again, I've left that at the default of 50 milliseconds. I found no need to adjust it. So settings in this are not particularly complicated. There's not many of them. And that's pretty much it for this video. It is a short one, but people have been asking for it. So here it is. I'm going to try and get some more of these done, like I said once before, as and when I can. You know, this week I haven't had a lot of time. So I thought this can be a quick video and get this done, you know, to get something out there for you guys, you know, this Friday. Uh, and also for people that have been asking for it. Um, but that really is all there is to it. So I hope that's been in some way helpful and I'll catch you all in the next one. As always, take it easy.